Here are seven Asperger traits that you definitely need to remember. All that plus more is coming right up. Guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan. I have autism, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia. So welcome. If you're new around here and you want to learn more, remember to hit the subscribe button by clicking the notification bell down below. And also, if you're watching on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, make sure to follow this page for daily videos. That's right, daily. So guys, um, you know, I just want to make something very, very clear here. Asperger syndrome has been renamed to just ASD, which stands for Autism Spectrum Disorder. A lot of people get confused by that, but I'm going to go through seven of the most common traits and characteristics that you can kind of identify someone who's on the spectrum with. So this is me and my uh, way of dealing with giving you traits and we'll get on with the video. Okay, so the first one is lack of eye contact. Now, autistic individuals find it really difficult to make eye contact or maintain eye contact. Why? Well, this is a social convention that something is taught to you and you learn this by doing and practicing those things like if you're in a social situation you'll learn that a person will look at you in the eyes when they're talking to you and they'll make direct eye contact well these kind of behaviors are somewhat difficult for autistic individuals to pick up on when you're in a kind of learned behavior environment but more importantly than that the actual uncomfortableness or the anxiety that when you look in somebody's eyes then you feel this kind of almost a connection to their soul so you don't really want to do that because it becomes really um difficult so if you're Finding that you have difficult with eye contact, this could be a sign that you're on the autism spectrum. You know, okay, look, we're very minimally here, I'm just talking about the first trait. But also, if you know somebody who doesn't make eye contact that well, then it could be that they're autistic. Okay, on to number two, monotone talking, which is really interesting. The monotone talking is talking in one complete flat tone the entire time, not making any inflection or any kind of difference in the voice or the tone, and I'll speak like this completely flat the whole time. Monotone talking is really interesting because we learn inflections either through acting school, right, or through social situations where you're basically picking up on how other people deal with the things that they talk about or whatever. And those things, again, because it's a social understanding or a social issue that autistic individuals sometimes will have difficulties with, then there's no guarantee that you'll be able to pick up on these inflections, right, or learn these inflections, because again, we learn through kind of practicing and doing these things. So autistic individuals will find this really, really difficult. Now, I myself, I'm, a, I'm an actor, like I've done acting and stuff like that. So getting to this point where I can actually talk with reflections and stuff, is actually taking some training and stuff like that. But typically, if you look at my first ever YouTube videos, I'm very monotonal, but that comes just as part of an autism spectrum disorder. Okay, so number three is obsessive interest. I mean, like obsessive, like, you know, you can have a, a specific topic of interest. It could be the Titanic, Marilyn Monroe, koala bears, penguins, could be anything, right? Mine is like Fight Club and 9-11, and I'm really morbid, right? But still, and the, the autistic individual will just kind of like really go just deep into that specific topic. Now, one of the interesting things is that they could talk about the topic for hours and hours and hours and be really comfortable talking about that thing because that topic of interest is like their thing, right? It's, it's the thing that they're most intrigued about. Most, they, they collect everything, all the books, all the movies, everything, because... That topic of interest is theirs. And this is really interesting because autistic individuals make really good researchers for certain things, especially like if you're, say, you're really into kind of data analysis, right? Then you could get a job as a data analysis. But in terms of uh, your average everyday life, a lot of people find it quite odd that you'll be so into something, right? But, you know, it, it's really interesting. I, I, th I find it the most fascinating. Actually, I have um, a small program uh, that you can take, which is how to turn your obsessive interest into a career. I'll leave a link for that down below because if you take that course, then you'll be able to kind of like just, I don't know, amplify what you already know and then actually monetize it, which is really good because a lot of autistic individuals find it difficult to find a job or be self-employed or do all things. So definitely check that out. The next one, four, rigid, restricted routine, right? And autistic individuals love routine. Why? Because routine allows you to know what's coming next. And autistic individuals thrive off the ability to know what's coming next so there's no surprises, right? And because that comes from safety and function. Like if you knew that you wake up, go downstairs, you have your cereal, sit down, and then you go to work or you come home, uh, or then you go to the store to do your groceries on a Monday, like those things are predictable, right? But the unpredictable, that sudden change, that spark of difference in your routine or what you expect to happen, can be quite difficult for an autistic person to grasp, right? So small changes in their routine can really disrupt the entire impact of their day or the structure of their life. And so rigid, restricted routine is one of these kind of common traits of people on the autism spectrum, especially with Asperger's syndrome kind of diagnosis people. They don't want to deviate from that specific. Like you've got the specific routine, the specific thing you're going to do, and you don't want to deviate from that because deviation will cause upset and frustration, right? So that's really interesting to remember. So number five is sensory processing issues, right? Now, I talk about this quite a lot. 
Now, autistic individuals will have comorbidities, meaning co-occurring conditions or conditions that happen alongside their condition. And this is basically when you've got ADHD along with autism, right? You also have this sensory processing disorder or what they actually shorten it to is SPD. And SPD is where you may be sensitive to sound, certain lights and smells and textures, clothing, heat differences, body temperature regulation. All these things can impact your sensory ability to regulate how you interact with the world or the third party environment. And people on the autism spectrum, I believe everybody has this on the autism spectrum, but some people don't have the diagnosis of it, but I believe it's true. And I do know that some people cannot be diagnosed with just sensory processing disorder. You have to have it as part of an autism spectrum. Like you have to have like autism and sensory processing disorder or something like that. This is so common in autistic individuals. Like you'll notice really unusual kind of like food habits or like uh, sensory habits, like smelling the hands or playing with certain textures or obsessed with uh, certain sounds or noises or like rewinding a piece of music and just listening to that piece of music all over again. I did this with the Beatles. Um, I, I took an intro, uh, sorry, I took the outro to Strawberry Fields and I, uh, from the album from 2007, and I kind of just looped it and then I put it on repeat on my um, computer. And I, just, I loved that, right? Because it was like a almost like a sensory-seeking experience for my ears, which is quite an interesting thing to say. Right, so number six is literal thinking. Now, interestingly enough, autistic individuals will take things at face value. Like if you said to an autistic person, this is this because of this, they'll believe you. Hands down, no issues. There'll be no doubt about it. It'll just be that. And I think having the ability to to see this it's very interesting because an autistic person can be quite vulnerable because you're saying to them, hey, go over there, it's safe. When it could not be safe, but they'll believe you that it's safe, right? And so everything comes at face value. Down to extremes where, you know, my partner will be maybe telling me a story about something that happened and she'll be like, oh, yeah, and then I did this. And I was like, well, at the moment she says, oh, like reenacting what she was doing. I'm like, well, what is it? What is it? Because at that moment in time, I'm taking it as a literal fact that she is shocked or worried in that moment in time, which is quite a difficult concept to kind of really break into when you're on the autism spectrum you're trying to figure out that somebody's telling you something about an event that happened that isn't happening right now but it was as a, a, it's a whole thing right it's a whole thing but that is something to remember literal thinking or taking things at face value is so common within autism and something that we should all really remember when we're dealing with autistic individuals okay number seven the last one is the most common one. This is social communication issues, right? Because there's a triad of impairments that impact the autism uh, diagnosis. And then you have to take on all of these, right? And one of these main ones is social communication issues, right? Now, if autistic individuals will have issues with social communication. And if we look back on this list, it makes sense. Lack of eye contact, monotone talking, rigid routine, you know, literal thinking, all these things will impact your ability to socially communicate with people in social settings. Like if you're at a bar or something, somebody's telling a joke, then you may not get the joke, right? Or you may take the joke really literal and be maybe offended or maybe you'll say something like um this is a bonus one number eight right is no filter autistic people don't have a filter they'll just say what they feel and say how they think it's if they if you had a haircut that looked bad and you said hey how does the haircut look your sister person will be honest today looks terrible because that's the type of brain activity that autistic person is is functioning at right and that to me is is causes many social issues now, there are a bunch more issues, right, that encompass autism. Now, I'd love to know, if you interested in learning more about that? Please give this video a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you think I've missed anything out because I love to have a conversation. I read and respond to every single comment. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Peace.